Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. Today we will start a new module, module number 7. So, in this module there will be 4 lectures, lectures 27, 28, 29 and 30 and the module title is management of water quality. So, this is specific to the watershed related aspects. So, the topics covered in this module include water quality and pollution, types and sources of pollution, water quality modeling, environmental guidelines for water quality. So, today in lecture number 27 in this module number 7, we will discuss about surface water quality and pollution issues. So, some of the topics covered in today's lecture include water quality, pollution sources, types of pollution, water quality parameters, water quality standards. Some of the keywords for today's lecture, water quality, pollution sources, types of pollution, parameters, standards. So, as we discussed earlier, say as far as watershed management is concerned, so water as a resource what we consider. So, we have to see that the water availability, the quantity of water is very important, but of course, when we deal water as a resource, the quality of the water is also very important. So, we have to see that the available water is protected, so that the quality is good. So, while studying the quality of the available water, we have to see the whether there is any pollution has already taken place, if the pollution is taken place, what is the amount of pollution and what are the components of that pollution within the water and then what are the sources of pollution so that we can see that whether we can reduce those pollution or go for some remedial activities. So, that way when we discuss about watershed management, water quality is very important issue. So, let us look into various aspects of water quality as discussed in this uh, slide. So, as I mentioned water watershed management is concerned, water is the most important resource as, as what we consider in a watershed. So, water quality and quantity both are important. So, not only the quantity, but quality also should be good. So, simply available uh, so if more water is available it does not mean anything, but quality also should be good for safe usage say for domestic. Uh, say for drinking purpose or any other purposes. So, then assessments and monitoring of water quality is uh, very important that way as we discussed and uh, say this is uh, very important as far as livelihoods of watershed dwellers that means the people living there. So, it may be water used for domestic purpose, drinking purpose or irrigation purpose whatever the purpose. So, it is very important that the quality is assessed properly and monitored so that the safe water or good water is available to the people. So, water quality actually the means we have, we have to see that what is what are the components whether it is exceeding certain limits of the water is considering. So, water quality uh, gives the examination or water quality is examination to determine whether there is any organisms, minerals and orga the organic compounds within the water whether it is say exceeding other say compared to certain uh, standards. So, that is what we are trying to do through water quality analysis. And then uh, this uh, say the standards are concerned, the standards varies depending upon the use. So, for example, drinking purpose is concerned we want the best uh, quality and uh, but say for example, for irrigation purpose or other purposes the quality will be different or industrial purpose the quality can be different. So, that way we have to assess the quality of the water available water. So, through physico chemical uh, say examinations or chemical tests and my microbiological analysis. So, that way various types of analysis physico chemical, chemical or biologic microbiological analysis are very uh, important. So, when we consider the water available within a watershed say as we discussed the water can be either surface water just like what is available in a lake or in a river or it can be ground water which we, we are extracting from the aquifer systems say through tube wells, borehole holes or the open wells. So, some of the important issues which generally we have to see that say the water is not affected by uh, bacteriological pollution or pathogenic pollutions and then uh, how much is the salinity or the dissolved solids within the water. And then uh, say any toxicity is there in the water say like micro pollutants and other industrial pollutants which may uh, uh, say percolate into the water uh, resources like in a river, lake or to the ground water system. So, these are some of the common issues which we have to deal 
when we discuss about the water quality, a surface water quality or ground water quality, uh, say when we discuss, uh, we have to see, we have to uh, analyze various samples and then see that whether any pollution is there uh, and then compare with the, the standards like uh, World Health Organization standards or uh, Indian Standard Institute uh, standards or various types of various country standards. And then uh, uh, say if it is not meeting, then we have to see what can be done. So, that is what we have to discuss, uh, we have to see as far as water quality is concerned on a watershed basis or when we deal with the uh, watershed management. So, now let us see the important aspects related to water quality standards and the uh, water pollution etcetera. So, water quality uh, as I mentioned indicates the physical chemical and biological characteristics of water. So, water quality indicates how, how is the physical like um, color, then uh, what is the turbidity, what is the taste, then chemical like uh, say how much TDS is there, total dissolved solids are there or whether any, any uh, say heavy metals or any other chemical pollution is there. Then biological characteristics like it is uh, the pathogens are there. So, then uh, generally as far as water quality standards are concerned, it is a measure of the condition of water relative to the requirement of one or more biotic species and or to any uh, human need or purposes. So, as I mentioned earlier whether it is for human consumption or whether it is other purposes like irrigation or industrial. So, according to the needs we have to assess uh, the quality of the water. So, it is most um, frequently used by reference I mean the water quality standards by reference to a set of standards. So, uh, say like uh, uh, WHO or World Health Organization standards or um, Indian Standard Institute standard, B standards or um, say US Environmental Protection Agency standards. So, like that various standards are available. So, we will be in, uh, comparing with those standards uh, with respect to the, the uh, by going through various uh, tests. And then we will see that uh, whether compliance is met as far as the particular samples or particular uh, source is concerned and then we have to see whether that particular usage is permitted or not. So, the most common standards used to assess water quality related to health uh, of ecosystems, safety of human contact and drinking uh, water is generally the most common standards with respect to World Health Organization standards. So, we have to see say the various uh, come say uh, we have to go through various tests and then see that the uh, the samples are uh, complying with these standards and then accordingly we can decide whether water can be used for domestic uh, or industrial or uh, agricultural or various other uh, purposes. So, then uh, when we discuss about the water quality uh, say uh, standards and categories say, say we as I mentioned when we do this kinds of analysis we can categorize into various uh, 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 category depending upon the usage of the water. So, uh, say for example, when we are discussing about human consumption. So, here uh, we are using the water for drinking purpose including uh, bottled water. So, this uh, our cooking and other purposes so may reasonably be expected to contain at least small amounts of some contaminants it is it may not be the purest form of the water just like um, say the, the rain water or distilled water, but uh, maybe some uh, say to, 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 to total dissolved solids or some minerals etcetera will be there within the water. So, presence of this contaminants does not necessarily indicate that water is poses a health risk. So, uh, say human consumption we are not uh, looking for purest form of water just, just like a distilled water, but there can be uh, some type of contaminants or minerals within the water. Then as far as industrial use is concerned, uh, say uh, the dissolved minerals may affect suitability of water for a uh, range of industrial and domestic purposes. So, depending upon the industrial use say for example, uh, the hardness of the water say uh, if calcium and manganese uh, which interfer interfere with the cleaning action of soap and can form hard sulphate and soft carbonate deposits in water. Uh, he heaters or boilers. So, hard water may be softened to remove this uh, type of ions. So, um, wherever if the water is hard, we have to make it soft and depending upon the industrial purpose. So, that way uh, we have to maybe we have to do some chemical treatment. So, similarly if we for human consumption say to make it palatable, we have to uh, say uh, purify it, go through filtration process or chlorination like that depending upon the uh, requirement. So, that way depending upon the uh, use we have to uh, see. Then uh, say as far as say the environment in the environment say like say ecological use for the the uh, 
the the agriculture uses or whatever the uses. So in the, in the environment is concerned, the toxic substances and um, uh, high populations of uh, certain microorganisms can present a health hazard for non-drinking purposes such as irrigation, swimming, fishing, rafting, boating and industrial uses. So, as far as these types of uses are concerned that means this is we classify as environmental use say for uh, plants or ecosystems or uh, fish, uh, fish or um, uh, that kind of purposes. So, here the standards will be different. Uh, so, these conditions may also affect wildlife which use the water for digging or as a habitat. So, here say for example, some of the, the uh, components can be higher since uh, it, we are not strictly following whatever is for, for human consumption. So, that way it will be standards will be different. And then of course, for irrigation purpose say uh, as we can see that um, say overall the world say about 70 percent of the water usage for uh, irrigation or crop requirements or in India especially it is going to 80 to 85 percent. So, that way irrigation water quality requirements it will be different. So, we do not have to go through these kinds of treatments. But of course, some of the components like salinity and other parameters uh, are very important otherwise the crop will be affected or crop growth will be affected. So, agriculture is a single largest user of fresh water a major cause of degradation of surface and ground water is also can be coming from the agricultural uh, usage say like um, uh, when we are putting fertilizers or herbicides or pesticides that may leach into surface water or ground water. So, that uh, agricultural uh, it can be a source also, but uh, for irrigation purpose for uh, crop use purpose uh, the standards will be uh, different. So, that way uh, water quality categories like human consumption or the industrial use or the ecological purpose or irrigation purpose, uh, the various standards are available. So, accordingly uh, we can decide the available water is suitable for that uh, particular uh, use or not. And now let us discuss what are the important uh, sources of this type of pollutions uh, when we consider a watershed or a river basin uh, say what are the various sources of pollutions. So, water pollution uh, as, as I mentioned is the contamination of water bodies. So, like uh, either lakes water in lakes, rivers, oceans or ground water. So, uh, say whenever certain components are exceeding certain limits. So, that is what we call it as contamination. And then water pollution occurs when pollutants are discharged directly or indirectly into water bodies uh, without adequate treatment to remove harmful uh, compounds. Say for example, if an industry is there industrial effluents. So, uh, it is coming through a large number of processes within the industry. So, certain components may be much 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 more higher than expected for, for the certain say with respect to certain standards. So, that way uh, say uh, if you do not treat the industrial effluents to the acceptable limit then that become a source of pollution. And then uh, this water pollution affects plants and organisms living in these uh, bodies of water say uh, the, the, the uh, plants living plants or uh, aquatic life will be affected due to this pollution or the water which is utilized by the plants uh, for irrigation or other purposes then that also uh, will be uh, affected. So, the effect is uh, uh, damaging to individual species and populations and natural biological uh, communities. So, that way uh, we have to see that to the uh, the water available is uh, of uh, good quality for the intended use. So, now uh, water pollution uh, source is concerned we can generally classify into two types one is uh, so called uh, point source and another one is so called uh, uh, non point source. So, that uh, depending upon say what is coming and uh, then uh, polluting. So, that is according to that uh, classification is done. So, first one is water pollution point sources. So, point sources means a contaminants that enter a waterway from a single identifiable source such as a pipe or ditch. Say for example, the, the effluent coming from an industry directly putting to a lake or putting to the ocean or putting to the river. So, that is coming as a point source or the effluent uh, the coming from the effluent treatment plant or the 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 uh, drainage systems. So, that this or we can consider as uh, point source. So, this uh, point source we can uh, trace to specific uh, source. Uh, so, it can be leaking uh, chemical tank effluents uh, coming from a waste treatment or industrial plant or a manual uh, spill from a hog confined and lagoon uh, etcetera. So, number of examples like a discharge from a severe treatment plant, a factory, a city storm drain, municipal storm sewer st systems, 
industrial storm water such as from construction sites etcetera. So, there are number of examples and uh, this uh, point source um, is a major source of pollution especially in urban areas. So, uh, urban areas are wherever the appropriate treatment is not given for industrial effluent or the, the uh, effluent uh, the sewage. Um, uh, so, then this become a major source of pollution to the to the water uh, sources like lakes, rivers or even to the ground water. So, this um, point source actually it is easy to uh, identify since uh, we can easily chase exactly where from where it is coming from and then we can uh, also uh, go, uh, go for uh, remediation that means by putting curtailing the, the that source or by uh, enforcing by enforcing agencies to, to uh, treat that effluent coming from industry or coming from the sewage treatment plant. Then that way we can uh, go for remediation or go for uh, uh, controlling this type of uh, point source pollution. So, point source pollution is e easier to deal as far as water quality is concerned and we can uh, try to control the, through uh, various means uh, easily. And then other one is so called uh, non point so source of pollution. So, here uh, the non point source of pollution or NPS the contamination that does not originate from a single discrete source. So, we cannot easily identify whether it is coming from uh, the one particular industry or like that, but it is generally from the say agricultural lands um, or the, the say, say sedimentation coming from the, the watersheds etcetera. So, NPS or non points source of pollution is the cumulative effect of uh, small amounts of uh, contaminants gathered from a large area. So, this is coming from uh, like overland flow or the, the, uh, the, um, the paddy fields or the uh, irrigation water uh, or the crop water which we provide and then uh, when we put um, uh, fertilizers or manures or herbicides or pesticides. So, these all will be leaching uh, or to the uh, ground water system or directly uh, joining to the to the, uh, the streams or rivers. So, these pollutants will come from widespread areas I mentioned, they cannot be tracked to a single point or source. So, like uh, soil erosion, chemical runoff, animal waste pollution uh, etcetera. So, uh, examples like leaching out of fertilizers, nutrients from agricultural lands, uh, nutrient runoff uh, in storm water, agricultural field or forest, contaminated storm water washed off uh, of parking lots, roads and highways called uh, urban runoff. So, these are some of the examples as far as the, the non point source of pollution is concerned. So, this non point source of pollution uh, say even though we can identify the, the how much is the pollution by taking samples from the particular sources, but it is not so easy to identify the this uh, sources and then the controlling the sources also become very difficult and that way the remediation also uh, become difficult. So, this uh, actually uh, say if you consider the, the uh, overall um, water quality issues or water pollution sources throughout the world is concerned actually non point uh, source of pollution is a major source of pollution uh, compared to point source. Since point source mainly we can easily identify from where this contamination is coming like industries or sewage treatment plant or whatever it is, but here non point uh, source of pollution it is very difficult to identify and then controlling also uh, much more uh, difficult. And now, uh, say let us discuss say uh, within this context uh, say especially um, point source uh, say what are the uh, specific sources as far as water pollution is concerned. So, here I have listed some of the uh, specific sources uh, like uh, septic systems. So, where uh, say here septic tank we use a large tank buried in the ground to contain and uh, break down household sewage. Uh, fats, oils and grease as well as large waste particles. Uh, they are stored and uh, later pumped out of the holding tank after keeping some time, uh, so that um, some uh, stabilization to, takes place. The source of uh, uh, actually this um, septic tanks are a source of uh, um, uh, pollution. Uh, concerned to ground water uh, um, especially and then surface water if there is any direct leakage. So, like you can see that um, this is the inlet to the, the septic tank and then 
we keep it for some time and there some of the things settle down and then this is say if any uh, set a breakage uh, for this system or overflow takes place then that become the source of pollution either to ground water system or the surface water systems. And then uh, sources like lagoons say where shallow holding uh, pits you can see that here shallow holding pits into which wastes are uh, pumped and treated say like um, in cities when we go for severe treatment plants we put in uh, this uh, waste water into lagoons. So, water quality problems like poorly constructed lagoons like leakage can take space from these lagoons and lagoons built on high water tables. So, that it can, can penetrate to the, the aquifer systems and from here nitrates and uh, various other um, heavy metals all this um, pollution can uh, take place. Then uh, say uh, waste disposal plants like underground or above ground disposal uh, practice or domestic municipal or industrial liquid waste. Uh, so, how we are treating say the waste disposal. So, waste disposal especially in uh, where our industries or cities are concerned is a major problem. So, if this uh, waste uh, especially waste water is um, not collected properly and then uh, treated to, through various uh, systems, then it will become uh, say this water will be joining to the, to the lakes, rivers or to the ocean uh, and then also it will be uh, seeping down to the aquifer system. So, that become a major source of pollution. So, waste disposal or waste water is one of the major source of uh, uh, say water pollution uh, say to the surface water as well as to the uh, ground water. And then on some of the other species sources here I have listed like uh, industrial liquid waste as I mentioned treated or untreated. Then also solid waste say like um, uh, say um, uh, solid waste especially in cities uh, we do, do land disposal say um, uh, like um, landfills will be constructed either scientific landfill or unscientific whatever is many of these water in India say for example unscientific landfills. So, these landfills um, say uh, uh, in uh, particular zones uh, say, uh, say when it uh, comes with uh, rain for rain water then it is a uh, uh, leachate will be uh, say produced and this will be leaching down to the to the aquifer systems or it will overflow th through the system to the uh, nearby surface water sources. So, that is from the solid waste. And then storage and transport of commercial materials. So, if any tanks or the, the say spill, spilling takes place or the tanks breaking takes place, then that will be a source of pollution. Uh, even we can see that in uh, ocean also when uh, ships um, uh, say uh, due to the breakage or the, the uh, um, say tanker uh, uh, spilling that can be also source of pollution. Then another source of pollution can be mining operations. So, mines uh, uh, say uh, use a lot of water for various purposes and that washed water become a source of uh, uh, say pollution. Uh, then oil and gas, acid mine drainage, leaching of toxic metals all these become source of pollution. And then uh, as I mentioned earlier as non points source of pollution agricultural operations. So, whenever we put fertilizers, pesticides that become a major source of pollution. So, what are fertilizers or manures we put so that uh, some parts uh, will be only used by the plants and um, majority ma major portions of this will be coming with the surface water or to the ground water and that become a source of uh, pollution as far as the uh, water is concerned. And then another uh, source of pollution can be like um, in uh, coastal regions when the, the sea water is ingressing to the to the river water or say the aquifer system the sea water intrusion takes place to the aquifer system. So, that also become a source of pollution. So, this various reasons can be there for this kinds of um, uh, uh, pollution in due to the uh, sea water intrusion. So, these are some of the specific sources uh, as far as uh, water pollution is concerned. So, now let us look into what are the uh, important causes as far as uh, water pollution is concerned. So, here uh, in this slide uh, say wide spectrum uh, of chemicals pathogens and uh, uh, physical or sensory uh, changes such as uh, elevated temperature and discoloration all this uh, can be uh, causes as far as water pollution is concerned. So, when uh, some chemical components exceed certain limits or when pathogens are introduced within the water so that become uh, causes of pollution. 
and then um, say uh, nowadays a huge amount of water is used uh, for um, say cooling purposes in uh, thermal power plants. So, that become the temperature become another source of pollution and then uh, and, uh, naturally occurring like uh, the uh, causes can be naturally occurring like salts, fluorides, arsenic, uh, calcium, magnesium, sodium etcetera. So, this will be say when uh, uh, due to rainfall or water passage over the, the these kinds of uh, salts then that um, uh, say dissolve and then become a source of pollution. And then man made or artificial like disposed by humans from uh, various sources from industrial or um, sewage or other kinds of things. So, that can be also causes. So, water is physical chemistry includes uh, acidity like, like a change in pH which shows and then electrical conductivity then uh, temperature and eutrophication. So, this all indicates uh, how say uh, the what type of pollution is taking place. So, the causes we can say by even physical examination like um, the temperature eutrophications or color uh, or smell from that also we can identify what, uh, what is the cause of um, uh, water pollution. So, that also give initial assessments and then uh, some of the samples can be collected and then assessed to see that what will what is what kind of pollutions uh, are there and then accordingly uh, we can look into the various aspects of uh, the water pollution. Uh, so, now let us look into the different types of pollutions uh, like water pollution types here. Uh, the pollutants can be uh, say as I mentioned when some of the components are more or less uh, say depending upon in the water which is particular for the part specific use. So, the pollution type can be organic pollutants. So, like um, detergents, uh, disinfection by uh, uh, by products, then uh, food processing waste, fats uh, and grease, then insecticides, herbicides, uh, organohalides and other uh, chemical components, then petroleum hydro, um, hydrocarbons um, including fuel, then uh, lubricants, then uh, fuel combustion by products. Uh, then tree and uh, bush debris from logging operations, then volatile organic contaminants such as industrial solvents, then chlorinated solvents, uh, um, uh, denapples, and uh, polychlorinated uh, biphenyl, then uh, trichloroethylene or perchlorate, and then various chemical compounds found in um, uh, personal hygiene and cosmetic products. So, the, the water pollution type it can be organic pollutants or inorganic pollutants. So, organic pollutants are what we what is given in this slide. So, it can be coming from detergents or petroleum products or volatile organic compounds or various things we use for uh, various cosmetic pro products or personal hygiene products. So, these are all uh, say, uh, say type of pollution can be uh, organic. So, then um, another type is uh, the inorganic pollutants. So, here I have listed some of the inorganic pollutants. So, like um, uh, acidity caused by industrial discharges like a sulfur dioxide uh, from power plants, then ammonia from food processing waste, then chemical waste as uh, industrial byproducts, then fertilizers containing uh, nutrients, nitrates and phosphates, and then uh, heavy metals from motor vehicles, then uh, silt or sediment in runoff from construction sites, logging, slash and uh, burn practice or land clearing sites etcetera. So, these all uh, introduce inorganic pollutants to the water. So, the, the, the pollutants we can classify uh, into two types one is organic pollutants and the second one is the inorganic pollutants. So, accordingly once we assess the water samples um, through various lab tests we can assess whether it is organic or inorganic and then accordingly uh, we can suggest a typical uh, type of um, same uh, treatments for the uh, water which we uh, we are trying to use for specific uh, purposes. Then uh, the pollution also can be uh, macroscopic or microscopic pollutants. So, here in this slide uh, microscope macroscopic means it is a large visible items uh, polluting the water. So, this may be a term as floatables in an urban storm water contest or uh, marine debris when found on the ocean uh, or open seas like then trash or garbages, then uh, dumping of rubbish, um, then uh, nurdles, small ubiquitous water borne uh, plastic pellets, uh, shipwrecks, etcetera. So, these are all uh, are under the category of macroscopic uh, pollutants and then microscopic pollutants like microorganisms um, within the water then dissolved or dispersed pollutants which is we, ca we cannot uh, easily visualize this kinds of pollutants microscopic type pollutants we can easily visualize and do the necessary treatment, but microscopic pollutants are concerned uh, we may have to uh, go for various tests to identify what are the real uh, 
pollution uh, which is causing the which within the water. So, the pollutants can be either mac macroscopic or uh, microscopic. And then as I mentioned nowadays uh, due to the, 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 the say lot of water is used for the, say power generation and then cooling uh, we use a huge quantity of water. So, thermal pollution is a major source of pollution. So, let us look into this slide where some of the important aspects of thermal pollution is discussed. So, the rise or fall in the temperature of a natural body of water caused by uh, human influence. So, this is the thermal pollution. So, thermal pollution results in a change in the physical properties of water. A common cause of thermal pollution is the use of water as a coolant by power plants and industrial manufacturers. Then elevated water temperature decreases oxygen levels. So, this is the side effect like um, say when uh, the temperature rises the, uh, the oxygen content reduces. So, that can kill the fish and affects the, the aquatic systems or the ecosystems and urban runoff may elevate temperature in, uh, in the surface waters like lakes or rivers or to the ocean. And the thermal pollution can also be caused by the release of uh, very cold water from the base of uh, reservoirs into uh, warmer uh, rivers. So, both ways the pollutions are also uh, possible like uh, cold water mixing with the warmer water. So, that way also possible. So, like that so thermal pollution is also a major source of pollution uh, in many of the, the, in the systems uh, aquatic systems. So, that also uh, we have to uh, consider. So, now whatever we discussed so far the, the uh, sources of pollution, causes, types of pollutions uh, and then um, the, the macroscopic, microscopic or thermal type of pollutions. So, now uh, say what are the important parameters of so, water quality. So, now let us discuss the water quality. So, what are the important parameters which we have to consider when we uh, say when we try to assess the given sample of water is uh, uh, good or bad or what is the condition of the water. So, with the parameters are uh, very important. So, generally the following list of indicators are often measured say when we are going for uh, lab tests or what type of particular test. So, first one is the alkalinity. So, like um, uh, uh, say whether it is water is al uh, acidic or alkaline that actually the pH indicates whether it is alkaline or acidic. Then color of water, then taste and odor, then uh, dissolved metals and salts uh, like uh, sodium chloride, uh, chloride, potassium, calcium, manganese, uh, magnesium etcetera. Then microorganisms such as uh, fecal coliform bacteria, uh, cryptosopodium and um, uh, giardia, lambi, labila. Uh, so, all these kinds of microorganisms. Then dissolved metals and metalloids uh, like uh, lead, mercury, uh, arsenic etcetera. Then dissolved uh, organics like uh, colored uh, dissolved uh, organic matters, then uh, dissolved organic carbon, uh, heavy metals etcetera. Then pharmaceutical byproducts then parameters. So, uh, this type of parameters say, uh, so when we are trying to assess typical particular samples of water, we are trying to see various parameters, how it is, uh, what is the range of these parameters within the water sample. So, as I mentioned al already, um, say uh, this uh, the parameters uh, we have to see the range and then depending upon what kind of use, whether you are using the specific water for drinking or industrial or irrigation purpose. So, accordingly the, the usage uh, say or the treatment which we can go for that varies. So, uh, so this, uh, these are some of the important parameters which we have to consider as far as the uh, water quality is concerned. So, this uh, water quality uh, uh, say uh, as far as water quality is concerned uh, uh, we have to consider certain environmental indicators. So, so here the environment indicators uh, we can uh, classify into um, uh, three uh, broad uh, say three categories. First one is the uh, chemical assessment, second one is the physical assessment, third one is the uh, biological assessment. So, chemical assessment say generally what we try to do is uh, say related to dissolved oxygen, the say uh, then uh, nitrates, then um, orthophosphates, uh, then uh, chemical uh, oxygen demands COD, biochemical oxygen demands. Uh, then pesticides, uh, metal etcetera. So, these are some of the assessment which you will be trying to do as far as the chemical assessment is concerned. Then uh, physical assessment uh, is another important uh, indicator, environment indicator. So, there uh, we will be trying to see the water is, the water sample is, water is whether it is um, 
uh, acidic or alkaline. So, this pH uh, indicates whether it is acidic when it is less than 7 it is acidic and uh, above 7 it is alkaline. Then um, what is the temperature range uh, same uh, as far as physical uh, assessment is concerned. Then uh, total suspended solid um, the, the how much suspended solids are there then turbidity of the water then total dissolved solids. So, these are some of the uh, major environment indicators as far as physical assessment is concerned. Then uh, uh, the biological assessment, biological monitoring uh, metrics uh, we can develop in uh, say depending upon the requirement. So, in many places uh, these metrics are used and then one widely used uh, measures is the presence and uh, abundance of uh, members of uh, insects uh, orders like uh, mayflies, um, stone fly and uh, uh, cuddies, cuddies fly. Uh, etcetera. And then of course, like uh, the microorganisms presence of bacteria and uh, protozoa or other kinds of organism within the water. So, that way the environment indicators are concerned it can be chemical assessment, chemical related, physical assessments or the uh, biological uh, assessments. So, now uh, let us look into some of the, the important as far as water quality is concerned the important physical chemical parameters generally which we test as to assess the suitability of water for the specified use. So, uh, as I already mentioned uh, it can be pH which indicate whether water is acidic or alkaline then color of the water and taste and odor then turbidity, TDS, total dissolved solutes, total hardness, chlorides, sulphates, uh, fluorides, nitrates calcium, heavy metals, dissolved oxygen, pesticides, detergents uh, and uh, radionuclides. So, these are some of the important physical chemical parameters which we have to test and then see uh, say how much is there for the particular samples. So, that we can specify whether the particular source of water is whether it is suitable for drinking or suitable for um, the irrigation purpose or suitable for industrial purpose. So, let us look into some of these important parameters what, what are those parameters and then um, uh, what is the range of these parameters. So, this pH is one of the important parameter which uh, shows whether the water is acidic or basic. So, neutral uh, the water is said to be neutral uh, then when pH is uh, 7 and it is acidic when pH is less than 7 and it is basic or alkaline when pH is greater than 7. So, as far as uh, say for example, drinking water is concerned generally the pH should vary from 6.5 to uh, 8. So, this is the range which is expected as far as drinking water is concerned and also irrigation purpose also it is not good whether acidic or uh, alkaline type water. So, this is almost the same range uh, we generally prescribe as far as irrigation is concerned. And then another thing is that uh, say mainly especially to um, see that uh, the, the dissolved solids or the salts what is there within the uh, water samples or water source uh, we can identify through electrical conductivity measurements. So, actually this electrical conductivity measurement shows water ability to conduct electrical current. So, this depends on concentration of dissolved. Uh, associated substances. Uh, so, uh, say like um, uh, say uh, sodium chloride or potassium uh, or various other kinds of um, uh, dissolved so, 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 so solids uh, TDS total dissolved solids that uh, is uh, uh, say the presence is indicated by electrical conductivity. So, to find the TDS uh, say uh, uh, say the uh, say we can do specific say, test and the unit is generally micro siemens uh, centimeter. Then uh, some of the other important water quality parameters like uh, order, color, and taste. So order uh, we can classify as very very uh, weak, weak, clear, strong, or very strong. So this we can uh, say uh, do ourselves. So order of the water. Then color uh, generally we can test uh, using uh, colorimeter uh, tubes. So, this is expressed in Hessen uh, standard units. So, generally for drinking water purpose the water should be clear. So, no color should be there. And then as far as taste, taste is concerned uh, uh, say the purest form of water like um, the, the distilled water it is uh, tasteless. So, but most of the drinking water there may be some kinds of um, uh, say salts or some uh, uh, total dissolved solids will be there. So, some uh, uh, taste will be there. So, generally the taste we call it as uh, palatable water depending upon the drinking purpose. Then another important component is turbidity. So, this turbidity is caused by presence of suspended matter uh, and it ranges in sizes from colloidal to uh, coarse dispersions. 
uh, measured by uh, nephelo turbidity meter and expressed in NTU nephelometric turbidity unit and this indicate uh, say whether the water is we have to treat say for example, especially uh, when we uh, take water from rivers or lakes um, for municipal supply. So, depending upon the rainfall conditions the water become turbid. So, we have to uh, go for specific type of treatment like settlement uh, or sedimentation or various processes for that type of water. So, this turbidity is an important parameter which we have to assess. Uh, say especially for drinking water purposes. Then uh, dissolved oxygen is another important parameter which we have to assess. So, dissolved oxygen indicates amount of oxygen gas uh, dissolved in water solubility of atmospheric oxygen in fresh water and it may ranges from 14.6 milligram per liter at uh, 0 degree centigrade to about 7 milligram per liter at 35 degree centigrade under, under 1 atmospheric pressure and this is um, we can measure using uh, dissolved oxygen meter and then we can see how much is dissolved oxygen. So, this dissolved oxygen uh, is very important as far as aquatic life is concerned and then also uh, various other uses like um, um, say human use is concerned dissolved oxygen uh, we have to measure and then see how much is available uh, within the particular source of uh, water. Then uh, other parameters like um, uh, biochemical oxygen demands. So, this is another important uh, water quality parameter which we have to test. So, here the amount of dissolved oxygen uh, demanded by uh, bacteria under uh, during stabilization of the decomposable organic matter under aerobic conditions. So, that is what the BOD or biochemical oxygen demand indicates and the BOD is expressed in milligram of oxygen consumed uh, per liter of sample during 5 days of incubation at 20 degree centigrade and is often used as a uh, robust uh, surrogate of degree of organic pollution uh, of water. Uh, say for example, pristine river water in the BOD should be less than 1 milligram per liter. So, BOD is one important aspect which we have to uh, measure and then see whether the, the water so source is safe for uh, uh, drinking or other kinds of purposes. And then some of the other important parameters like nitrate. So, um, the nitrate uh, the water soluble molecules made up of nitrogen and oxygen. So, the natural it is actually natural constituents of plants and in natural form of water contains less than 1 milligram of nitrate. So, nitrogen per liter and higher well levels uh, actually the nitrate is uh, contamination. Common sources uh, which is generally like fertilizers, animal waste, manures. Uh, and then maximum permissible is 10 uh, parts per million or 10 ppm uh, of the nitrates. Then uh, another uh, water quality parameter important water quality parameter is so called the chlorides. So, chlorides uh, can come from dissolved salt deposit discharge of effluents uh, etcetera. So, generally maximum permissible limit is 250 parts per million or 250 uh, ppm. Then uh, say uh, uh, some of the other important parameters like fluorides. So, fluorides can uh, say uh, it is mainly in uh, say happens in ground water or some of the uh, other water sources. So, fluorides uh, say it is the fluorine containing compounds um, then found them naturally in low concentration drinking water and uh, foods. So, fresh water it can be between 0 0.01 to 0 0.3 uh, ppm and ocean water contains say between 1.2 to 1.5 ppm. Maximum permissible limit for drinking water is 1 ppm. So, if it exceeds say fluorides, if it exceeds certain uh, limits then uh, uh, there can be problems like um, skeletal fluorosis or if, if it is not there also so to certain extent like um, uh, say 0.5 ppm or say like that it should be available within the uh, water. So, otherwise um, uh, and then uh, say say it can be up to say 0 0.3 is the uh, 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 say up to 0 0.3 it should be available within the water otherwise there can be uh, problems related to uh, teeth uh, and other related issues if fluoride is less uh, it is problem and also more than uh, other types of problems can uh, comes like uh, skeletal fluorosis. Then another important parameter is um, uh, hardness. So, this hardness represents total concentration of especially calcium and magnesium ions. Uh, so, this is also mentioned in ppm, so weight per volume. 
and uh, hard water is generally not harmful to one's health, but it can pose serious problems in the industrial uh, settings like um, boilers, say like precipitations or um, say um, uh, uh, various uh, problems can be there when we use uh, hard water in the, in the industry. So, we may have to make it soft depending upon the uh, uh, specific use of the uh, water. Then another important parameter is iron. So, iron naturally occurring and this is generally not hazardous, but the recommended limit is a 0.3 milligram per liter. So, uh, say this also comes naturally to the uh, water. Then some of the other important parameters like heavy metals, heavy metals can be arsenic, cadmium, chromium, copper, iron, manganese, mercury, nickel, silver, uh, zinc, etcetera. So, present in as uh, minerals in soils, uh, this can leach with the rain water or the surface water. Also, artificially from um, man made things uh, sometimes also brings this heavy metals. So, some of these like major contaminations uh, like um, arsenic uh, or mercury or lead, these are all some of the major uh, contamination uh, as far as uh, water is concerned. And these are generally determined by atomic absorption uh, spectrophotometers AAS or polo, um, polarography or uh, colorimetry. So, these are some of the testing um, uh, methods as far as the heavy metals are concerned. Uh, say for example, arsenic is a major issue in states like West Bengal and then uh, generally this, this is due to overdraft of the ground water and especially wherever the that kind of arsenic related um, uh, say minerals are there that leaches into the ground water and generally say as per World Health Organization guidelines it should be less than 0 0.5 milligram per liter. Then other uh, parameters like pesticides which are harmful for health effects such as cancer and then uh, say for example, presence of DDT, BHC, Parathon or endosulfan uh, etcetera say for example, this endosulfan is uh, a major uh, source of pollution in uh, um, may say uh, uh, northern Kerala and um, uh, Mangalore region. So, this has created a lot of uh, problems uh, which are this are used mainly for cash nut crops and that comes to the surface water sources or ground water sources. Then other parameters like uh, detergents, phenol, radionuclides. So, uh, World Health Organization guidelines are there in all this it should be definitely less than 0 0.5 milligram per liter. And then uh, halogenated um, chloro organic compounds. Uh, so, this can be due to higher chlorination for disinfection. So, this also we have to control. Then of course, um, uh, microbes like uh, pathogens or bi bacteria or viruses. So, these are all uh, indicator we have potential water borne diseases. So, this also uh, we have to control say for example, coliform bacteria. So, these are all some, some of the important water quality parameters which we have to identify and then we have to test it and then if it exceeds uh, uh, certain uh, say standards say like World Health Organization standards or US EPA standards or Indian uh, standards. So, then uh, when it is exceeding uh, these uh, limits, so we have to go for a specific treatments uh, and then only uh, we can use the water for that uh, particular uh, usage. So, now uh, let us look into say what are the common water related problems. So, we can see that um, uh, depending upon the presence of various contaminants or various pollutions pollutants uh, within the water. So, uh, say uh, some of the, the effects we can directly observe within the water. Uh, so, like a taste or like a color or a smell all these things we can easily uh, uh, say visualize or uh, taste it. So, that we can uh, easily take go for various measures or we can try to identify uh, what are the sources of this type of pollutions. So, for example, when uh, the water which we are storing or which we are using for cooking or other purpose when water turns black or um, the smell is not good then uh, it can be say that source of water will be mixed with the waste water. So, that we can uh, try to identify. Then uh, say if any acidic taste is there for the water then that means the pH is low then alkaline means high pH. So, depending upon the uh, source of water, the, it can if uh, acidic or alkaline is dangerous. So, generally for drinking or cooking purpose, the pH base should be between 6.5 to 8. Then uh, say for example, while uh, boiling uh, say rice, um, say uh, the rice become hard and yellow, then we can presume that uh, alkaline the water is uh, slightly alkaline. 
then uh, white deposits on boiling. So, that means um, say the water is hot, then uh, iron taste um, change in uh, color after exposure to atmosphere, change in uh, color of cloths, utensils, oily appearance on top of water. So, the here that means presence of iron compounds, then uh, soap not lathering that means hardness, then brownish black streaks on teeth that means um, fluoride or related tissues, then growth of algae in the water source that means in the presence of nitrates or phosphates then uh, uh, say within the water available fish are killed that means the, the it can be less dissolved oxygen within the water or pH is less and then if the taste is salty then say more chloride is present. So, like that we can easily identify the observed problems and then we can try to identify the causes. So, now uh, say let us look into water quality tolerance and classification. So, as per Indian standard institutes IS. Uh, 2296 uh, 1982. The tolerance limits of uh, parameters are specified as per the classified use of water. Uh, so, here um, uh, classified into class A to E. Uh, so, types of use class A drinking water source without conventional treatment, but after disinfection. Uh, then class B outdoor bathing, class C drinking water source with the conventional treatment followed by disinfection, class D fish culture and wildlife uh, propagation. Then uh, class E irrigation industrial cooling or uh, uh, controlled waste disposal. So, let us look into this categories. Um, so, for example, as given in the IS codes and reported in Ministry of um, uh, Water Resource or Central Pollution Control Board Government of India, some of the classifications are given here. Say so, pH should be 6.5 to 8.5, then uh, dissolved oxygen uh, sh should be the tolerance is 6, then bio BOD uh, 2, uh, then uh, uh, total coliform organisms uh, up to 50, color hazen units 10, uh, then order should be unobjectionable, then taste should be agreeable taste, then TDS should be uh, less than 500, total hardness uh, should be less than 300. Um, so, like that uh, various uh, uh, same, uh, same tolerance limits are given say for class A, class A is for uh, drinking water source without um, conventional treatment, but only after disinfection it can be used. So, this table gives uh, limits of uh, inland surface for uh, class A water. Then class B which we can uh, say outdoor bathing and other purposes. So, here some of the uh, tolerance limits like pH value should be between again 6.5 to 8.5, dissolved oxygen uh, limit is 5, then BOD 3, then uh, total coliform organism 500, fluorides 1.5. Uh, color hazen units 300, uh, then uh, uh, same uh, like uh, uh, say phenol compounds less than 0 0.005 uh, like that. So, here this is for class B which is for outdoor uh, water usage like uh, swimming and other purposes. Then class C is actually for uh, here as you can see that uh, drinking water source with the conventional treatment followed by disinfection. So, this table again shows uh, the pH value should be between 6.5 to 8.5 dissolved oxygen 4, BOD uh, 3, then total coliform 5, um, uh, same uh, per 100 ml 5000 color 300. So, like that this type of uh, specification you can see. Then class D which is considered is for um, uh, fish culture and wildlife propagation. So, there uh, here the pH value again 6.5 to 8.5 dissolved oxygen 4, free ammonia uh, 7.2, electrical conductance uh, thousands, uh, then uh, uh, say alpha emitters, uh, beta emitters um, 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 say the 10 to the power minus 9, 10 to the power minus 8 uh, like that. Then the last one is uh, for the, uh, the purpose of uh, say uh, irrigation uh, and industrial. So, it can uh, say here uh, again the, the variation like electrical conductivity can be up to 2250 then uh, total dissolved solids can be 2100 uh, like that. So, like this we can see that um, so various standards are available. So, what are the tolerance limit is given per, as per IS standards here we, I have shown. So, according to WHO standards or US EPA standards or uh, Indian standards. So, we can prescribe those standards and accordingly we can see that available water is um, uh, suitable. Now, before closing let us briefly see a case study related to water quality issues in India. So, in India water resources are over exploited resulting in major water quality problems. Common issues of surface and ground water includes pathogenic bacteriological pollution, salinities, toxicity, 
uh, then uh, and other industrial pollutants. Then surface water especially main issues like eutrophication, oxygen depletion, ecological health, most of the lakes and rivers are highly polluted. So, these are some of the surface water pollution issues in India. Then ground water is concerned the presence of fluorides, nitrate, arsenic, iron or sea water induction. So, these are some of the main issues as far as the, the water quality uh, is concerned in, uh, as far as India is concerned. Then uh, say some of the major factors uh, which causes this kinds of degradation uh, like um, uh, say domestic industrial or non point source or dom say domestic sewage or sewage along with agricultural runoff. So, domestic say about 430 class 1 cities and 500 class 2 towns harboring uh, population of um, uh, say 300 million uh, generate about uh, 30,000 million liters of uh, per day of waste water which only about 25 percent is treated. Then industrial about 60,000 uh, polluting industries in India generate about 15,000 million liters uh, per day of which only 60 percent is uh, uh, treated. The non-point source of pollution contributes significant pollution load coming from uh, say especially overland and the agriculture sources. Then uh, domestic sewage uh, say uh, main source of other type of pollution for surface water. Then sewage along with agriculture runoff and industrial uh, effluents also contribute large amount of nutrients. So, then uh, say here some of the figures taken from this uh, central Con pollution control board you can see that um, say the uh, the number of populations then uh, population uh, uh, water supplied then um, uh, waste water then treatments. So, you can see that what is varying from 1978 to 2003 is given. So, this amount is going up, but the treatment is also not not going to that level. So, that is a major source of pollution water supply and severe disposal status in class 1 cities. So, similarly very similar way the similar trend we can see in class 2 cities. Then comparison of pollution load generation from domestic and uh, industrial sources again uh, see this uh, uh, red color shows the uh, domestic and uh, this blue color shows the industrial. So, again uh, the uh, BOD discharge, uh, discharge or BOD generation and then uh, waste uh, treat, uh, treatment. Uh, so, these things are shown in these uh, figures. So, similarly river basins let us say like major, major rivers like Indus. Ganges, then Brahmaputra, Sabarmadi, etcetera. So, this red color shows where the BOD higher range. Uh, so, B, blue color more than 6 m, m milligram per liter, uh, then red color between 3 to 6 and blue color less than 3. So, you can see that a major stretch of the rivers uh, say uh, there is problems. So, that way uh, the water qualities are concerned major issues there as far as India is concerned especially surface water, the river water, lake water. Uh, so, major uh, pollution problems are there. So, government of India through various agencies are trying to solve these problems say like recent uh, uh, say uh, river Ganga action plans to reduce the pollution loads. Uh, so, uh, uh, that uh, various state governments are also uh, working in this direction. So, uh, uh, say private public partnership or uh, people should come together to deal these kinds of uh, pollution problems as far as surface water or ground water is concerned. So, some of the important references used in today's lectures. So, before closing some of the tutorial questions critically study the uh, water quality problems of major rivers, river basins in India study various sources and causes which are details are given here the, from this you can get. Study the various measures that can be adopted to reduce the river pollution or river on in river basins. Then some self evaluation questions discuss the various water quality issues in watershed management describe various water quality categories then what are the different pollution sources uh, types describe various water pollution causes illustrate water pollution by thermal sources describe various water quality parameters. Then few assignment questions describe water quality standards, discuss various water pollution sources, describe various specific sources of water pollution, illustrate various water pollution types, describe various water quality indicators, what are the various common water related problems. Now, finally, uh, some unsolved problems critically study the possible surface water pollution problems in your watershed area, identify the water sources and the possible causes of pollution. Uh, what are the roles of agricultural uh, land use and uh, industrial uh, other uses in the uh, pollution problems. 
and prepare a plan to reduce the possible uh, pollution problems. So, many of these questions like assignment or uh, so self evaluation questions you can answer uh, by going through today's lecture, uh, other details are given. So, today what we discussed is the, the water surface water quality issues and uh, water pollution uh, sources and then various parameters. So, further we will discuss this uh, ground water quality problems uh, issues and then uh, water quality modeling. Thank you very much.